What, what an announcement. Uh, now I have a hard time to really get into this. First of all, buenas tardes, señoras y señores. Es un auténtico placer de estar aquí en Bogotá. Uh, thank you. <laughs> this uh, is really something very special for me to be here in uh, South America. And uh, I grew up uh, in Brazil, so I have a very personal relationship to this continent, and it's always great to be back here. Some Brazilians. <laughs> yeah. There's lots of them. <laughs> so I have now 19 minutes left to <laughs> convince you, and I brought some colleagues uh, which are going to help me, to convince you that the automotive industry, after all, being an old industry, is still quite exciting. Well, I wanted to start now at the beginning because whenever I try to look into the future, I am a big fan of looking back a little bit and saying what was what people thought 10, 15 years ago is going to be the future and what really happened afterwards, what came really true and what not and at the end of the day, why not? Because I think we can learn a lot by this. So I brought you some examples to show you what I mean with this. First one is... Intelligent watch. And I know most of you are probably too young, but when I was younger, to have such intelligent watch was a huge dream. And back then, we had a lot of people saying, this will never happen, it's impossible, and they all told you why it's not uh, going to happen. You know all these people who are against everything when it comes for the future. And you all know it's quite normal part of our daily life. Those are the, those are the Apple delegates. <laughs> Uh, what? <laughs> Apple people in the audience. <laughs> okay, great company. Um, <laughs> that's not a product placement, I'm just using it for my presentation. <laughs> uh, second example, robotic. I mean, look at these wonderful designs. People dreamt about to have robots around us many, many, many years ago. And also back then, a lot of people said, not possible, will never happen, it's totally stupid, these are dreamers, forget it. What do we have today? Robots everywhere, not only in production, we have it in our households, we have it in our backyards, so it became part of our normal life. Third example, flying cars, former dreams of the future. Now you could say, the automotive industry was the only one who did not deliver because we still don't have flying cars and I can't promise you today that we are going to have them quite soon. So we didn't deliver on this uh, dream and you can see here this nice picture. I have to tell you a story here. Some bad people, really bad people, are saying the only thing which the automotive industry was able to do in the last 100 years was to turn around two of the four people on the picture. <laughs> I, 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 would say, I would say we did a little bit more than that, but I, I, I get the comment. So this was just to show you a little bit that we always, when we dream about the future, uh, we have more people around us telling us it's not possible, it will not happen. And I just can encourage you to really stick to it. What I always say, you know, be very stubborn with your dreams, your vision. You can be flexible in the execution, but be stubborn with your vision and believe in it, and it will happen. And so many examples showing this. So let's jump now into the future. And what are we dreaming today about the mobility future? And uh, you read a lot about this uh, topic of 
autonomous driving and with technology which is coming to the market. I can't tell you exactly the year when it's going to happen, but I can tell you that I'm totally convinced it will come and it will transform dramatically the way how we all live mobility in our cities. And not only that, I think what I'm missing a little bit in this discussion about the mobility of the future is we are still talking too much about the technology itself. I think what we have to start to discuss as a society, what will this technology do with us, with us as human beings living in the cities? And I can tell you my view on this is it will increase the quality of life in an urban environment dramatically. And you have to envision if there's all robot cars on the street, we are not going to need any more traffic lights, no traffic signs, there will be no accident, it will be noise free, no emission. We will not need parking spaces because these robots are going to move all the time. So parking space can be transformed in green areas again. We, we won't need parking houses, parking spaces, big parking spaces, we can transform them in living areas again. So the quality of life with this technology will really change dramatically how we live in major cities. That's, for me personally, what drives me every day to work on this, because this is, for me personally, much more important than the technology itself. Now, how do we get there? How do you lead a company towards this mobility future? And what you need to be really, if you put it in a nutshell, you need to be a company which is agile, anticipative, and adaptive. And because it's a small group of people here, let me be very, very honest, that's <laughs> everything we are not. We are not agile, we are not anticipated, we are not adaptive. We are a big corporation which is much too slow in doing this kind of thing. So we have to learn this. And this transformation process in our company is much more complicated than the technology discussions. You know, all these new technologies, we know how to deal with them. But the transformation comes out of a different culture within a company. And to change a culture in a big corporation is a massive work and it's much more complicated than developing a new car, I can assure you. So we started a lot of initiatives and I brought one colleague with me, it's Thomas, who will give you one example how we are trying to move this big elephant you see here in a little bit of different direction. Thomas. Thank you, guys. BMW was founded on a great cultural values. Being in business for over 100 years means that we continuously need to challenge our assumptions and beliefs. The youngest movement to adapt our corporate culture to new challenges our industry is facing is the Connected Culture Club a platform where all employees can voluntarily and proactively develop our way, uh, our way of why we go to work. Purpose is a strong driver for us, and the key issues we discuss is the role of our business in society. We already reached thousands within our company and are thrilled to move on. Talking, listening, and being transparent with each other is the key to diversity, sustainability, and success. This is how we support an enabling culture to actively sorry, address the global goals. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Moving on, because my time is running down, 10 minutes left, it's I have okay. to speed up. It's okay. It's okay? Yes. Okay, if you say so. For you, anything. Uh, huh? For you, anything. Oh. <laughs> okay. Honestly. 
<laughs> now, now we are talking. Um, <laughs> now I have a hard time to get back to be serious. <laughs> Sustainable development goals. We, we look a lot in our company, what can we really contribute to these goals? And we have identified five areas where we have a direct impact and uh, we have a, another two areas where we are working on where we basically have an indirect impact on this uh, sustainable development goals. And I also brought one colleague here now to show you one example and please welcome Hobart. Thank you, Peter. Ladies and gentlemen, the Sustainable Development Goals have recently been also incorporated in Chinese government policy with the 2030s implementation plan. We at BMW Group are taking an active role to shape the, sustain the sustainable mobility future. Two examples in China. First, the production plants in our joint venture in Shenyang, now south of China, recently got awarded with the Chinese Best Green Plants Award for its results efficient production. Hereby, we are contributing to the SDG 12 for the responsible production. Another case will be, in our, our vehicles, we use advantage the technology to clean the air inside BMW cars. Within just 10 minutes, over 99% of the PM2.5 emissions can be filtered. And in this way, our 3 million Chinese customers can enjoy the really good and healthy air quality inside our BMW cars while we are contributing to the SDG3 on good health. Thank you. Thank you. And dressed up totally today, First time I see you with a tie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Let me basically introduce you in a couple of minutes to the main technologies we are working on. We call them ACES, and I will elaborate a little bit on each of them. I could talk an hour about it, but I don't have, I only have seven minutes left. Mm. Autonomous. I think I mentioned this before, a technology which in my eyes will transform completely the way how we live in cities. And here it's also, it comes back to the cultural issue which I mentioned before. We are developing this technology together with partners, um, Intel and Mobileye, and we brought all our employees together in the same area and, and make them really work together in the same project environment. And this is an interesting experience because we come from so different culture. Mobile Eyes, a company from Israel, Intel brings people from all over the world. So if you walk through this place where we are developing autonomous driving, we have roughly about a thousand engineers now and we are still building up to probably around about 2,000 engineers. We come from so many different cultures, different countries, different languages, different gender. And the thing which puts them together is this common goal. You know, they don't care where the other is coming from. They only want to develop together the best autonomous technology in the world. And this is what I meant before. If you have a common goal, a common vision, and passion for it, you can do it. And this diversity in this area is helping us a lot to become much faster in implementing it. Connectivity, I think this is something where people are talking a lot about, that the car becomes part of the internet and all this stuff. This is probably true, but we started this in the BMW Group uh, years ago. We already have 10 million cars out there in the world which are already fully connected. Coming to electrification, you see here that uh, with the i3 and the i8 and now also uh, the plug-in hybrid from a countryman for Mini, 
we started very early in really saying we need to get into this game of electrifying our vehicles. But we also learned quite early in the process that it's important that you approach this as a 360-degree look, and not only to say, well, let's build an electric car. You really have to look the whole uh, 360 circle, including also the energy side of it. And here also, we have one example, and this will explain Prain, what we are doing here in this area. Prain. Thank you, Peter. Hello, everyone. With the launch of the iconic i3 and i8, BMW redefined the future of mobility by combining technology, sustainability, and performance. The i3 that you guys see on the second floor is made of carbon fiber manufactured at our plant in Moses Lake, Washington, which is powered entirely by locally generated hydropower. And compared to our overall production average, the i3 uses 50% less energy and 70% less water per vehicle. And over its entire life cycle, the i3 emits 30% less CO2 compared to our most efficient and compact one series. As you can see, we know what it takes to deliver no compromise solutions for our customers during this time of rapid change. By 2025, we'll be offering 25 all new models with an electric drivetrain, of which 12 will be pure battery electric vehicles. And this diversified portfolio is what we're going to do to contribute to our SDGs 11 on sustainable, sustainable development and communities and cities, as well as 12 on production and consumption, and lastly, 13 on climate action. Thank you. Okay, moving on to, no, I, this was too quick, but it doesn't matter, uh, shared mobility. We, we started uh, our Drive Now program with car sharing uh, many years ago. We have now about a million users around the world and expanding continuously. And uh, important part, which we also learned over the last years, is that uh, working with cities, because we can't do it alone, and how we do is, Susanne is going to tell you. Mobility is a basic need for all people and cities. If you cannot move and if you cannot breathe in a city, you have a problem. We constantly and intensively work with the cities to define and reshape the framework of urban mobility. The goal is to provide mobility solutions for the urban environments. In our on-demand fleets, we operate 870 BMW i3. We have already delivered 1.4 million pure electric trips with a distance equivalent to 250 times around the world. That has saved 1,700 tons of CO2, and that is only during the past two years. Only by constantly challenging the status quo and resetting the framework can we deliver mobility solutions in a sustainable manner, and that contributes to um, SDG 11. All right. Uh, we don't stop, of course, at uh, this technology I just uh, showed you. We are also constantly working on uh, sustainability when it comes to our entire value-added chain. And uh, I brought you also a very interesting example, which is going to be presented by Christina. Christina. Eighty percent of the value chain of a car is generated within the supply chain. We aim to add value for all people involved by setting sustainability standards along our supply chains. But moreover, we take also action on the ground. One example, the interior of the already mentioned BMW i3, we use the fiber that comes from Bangladesh. We went there and worked together with about 1,000 local farmers. By providing them trainings, they increased the yield of the farms, improved the quality of the produced fibers, providing opportunities for them for higher revenues. By doing this, we contribute to the SDG goal 8 
decent work in economic growth and also on SDG goal 10 on reducing reduced inequality. Okay, coming to a close almost. Point which I made earlier on when I talked about the autonomous driving technology. I think what we also learned in our company that one of the really key success factors is diversity. And uh, I, I think that there is one example which we wanted to share with you, which also shows of uh, how serious we are with this topic in our company. And we brought one example which will be presented by Pearl. Hello everyone, namaste. Being from India, I understand the power and need of a true driver's word. I work on various initiatives to bring about an inclusive work atmosphere. At BMW, we have people working at across more than 50 locations and hundreds of dealer networks, and we understand how diversity works on a daily basis. We also support social entrepreneurs through an Intercultural Innovation Award. And I'm really proud to share that last year, the, the Intercultural Innovation Award went to a project called Safe City from India. Safe City is a project that aims to make public places more safer for women and girls through crowdsourcing data and engaging the communities. Women and girls can actually share their experiences on gender-based violence on that web portal. This is just one of the many examples that we do at BMW towards diversity and contribute to SDG number five on gender equality. Thank you. Okay, so we are almost done and my time is uh, at zero already. Um, before we, I finish up here, I thought about, you know, it's very likely that uh, everything we told you here in the last 20 minutes, you are going to forget. It is very likely. So I thought, what could I leave with you that maybe resonates a little bit longer than uh, two or three hours? So I brought two sentences with me, which I personally think are key to really becoming an important leader in the future. And number one, the literacy of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. I think this is extremely important moving forward. I always tell people, you know, I have now 30 years of experience in the automotive industry. A lot of this experience doesn't help me today because things are changing so quickly and I constantly have to learn new stuff. So keep this in mind, please. I think this is very important moving forward. And my second favorite sentence is this one. If you want to be innovative, it means to have a willingness of not being understood for a long time. And it sounds funny. <laughs> It, it sounds funny, but it's a very important point because if you want to be innovative, you will have a lot of situations where you are going to be frustrated a lot. You have thousands of people around you saying, no, it's not possible, don't do it, and all this stuff. So this is, keep this in mind. You have to have this willingness. So this ends the corporate part of my speech, but I have two more slides, more on a private note. Because people always ask me, you know, uh, as member of a board, what do you do in your time when you have free time? By the way, I don't have free time, but uh, when I have it, I, I personally am very engaged in a lot of projects where I have passion about it. And one was, and I wanted to share it with you, is called Sarvajal. This is a project in India. Sarvajal means water for all. Uh, I started this with a startup uh, in India several years ago. Uh, it's uh, in a slum in the middle of Delhi 
We have now, meanwhile, over 400,000 people using our water ATM and growing constantly. And uh, this is a project which is important to my heart. And I was engaged many, many years with a lot of passion. I went there every free time I had to get it going. And now it's on a ramp where it's basically almost going automatically. So again, it's not about talking and having great visions. Uh, if you have something in your mind, do it. Don't wait for somebody else. Just really do it. Now, the second uh, thing I wanted to share is I started this project only four or five weeks ago because I have seen so many great initiatives around the world working on sustainability, making our planet really uh, better, but they don't have a chance because they don't have a platform to really get to know other people and maybe to inspire it. So I started four weeks ago to build a new platform. If you go on it, please don't judge it yet. It's a beta version, so it's really still very rough, but I wanted to share with you the platform is called Make the Planet Great Again. And <laughs> and uh, if you go on it, we have currently 10 projects on it. We, we try to choose projects which everyone here in the room could do immediately as well. So the idea is really to motivate people, and our goal was that once a month we try to convince one person or one team around the world to start something, to do something. That's the idea behind this, and I would be extremely happy if you are one of them who would start something new. That was it for my personal side. I, I really wish you still great uh, event now for the next 24 hours or so. And, um, Keep this in mind, the doing at the end of the day is what counts. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. So